Can we ride every single ride in Hollywood Studios in one day? We're gonna find out. This is science, baby. I'm pretty excited. I, it's a challenge is what it is. Research and challenges are our life. It's a, pa it's a passion. Yeah, Let's it's a get passion. it going. Emma and I are here at Disney's Hollywood Studios, widely considered Disney World's most stressful parks, to ride all of the rides today. And we're not gonna stop at the rides. There are a lot of shows in Hollywood Studios. So anything that has like a more traditional queue, we are going to be getting through today. Every single thing. Do you think we can do it, Emma? Absolutely we can. I like that attitude. <laughs> So it's a little bit before 8.30 and as you can see the crowds are actually not that bad comparatively to things we have rope dropped in the past. There is early entry this morning here at Hollywood Studios which starts at 8 and goes until 8.30. Unlike Magic Kingdom, Hollywood Studios actually opens all of the rides unless there's technical difficulties so there's not really a perfect rope drop scenario here. But we feel pretty good compared to the crowds We've got today. a plan. We've got plans. We've We're got ready plans. to go. All right, Where is so 8.29. Park opens at 8.30, so that is when we can grab our individual attraction selection, which for this park is Rise of the Resistance. Park just opened, we can hear cheering. I am trying to get us a Rise Lightning Lane. For the individual Lightning Lane purchases, you can, uh, resort guests can start getting them at 7 a.m. and everybody else can get them at the minute the park opens. So the park just opened. I was able to get us a Rise of the Resistance at 12.40 p.m., which was the earliest available. Not super late, also hottest part of the day. Yeah. So I I'm pretty good. happy with that. I feel like this is going to be a good day. I think so too. I'm feeling really, really great. Yeah. All right. We just scanned in. It is like 832 probably. Yeah. Emma burnt herself on her rice cooker and didn't wear her watch. I, I'm sorry. And I rely on her. Look it at the burn. Really burn. But I rely on her for the time when we're in the parks together. I'll check my phone. And now we're going to have to pull our phones out of our pockets. <laughs> So not too far Okay, off. 834. So we just scanned into the park. There was a little wait kind of walking up to the actual scan because of everybody trying to enter, but we are making good time here. Now we already have a Genie Plus Lightning Lane for Slinky Dog Dash and the individual Lightning Lane for Rise the Resistance. So that means our rope drop strategy is going to involve turning a right and heading down Sunset Boulevard to try to hop on Tower of Terror and Rock and Roller Coaster while the weights are still low. Tower of Terror, you say? I do say. It's been pretty slow this week in Disney World, I would say, probably for the past few days. I think we're going to have some luck today on riding every ride in Hollywood Studios. However, even with a slow day, this part can be tricky because despite having fewer attractions than other parks, it does have a lot of theater shows. And to be able to catch all of those and see all of those, you kind of have to play your cards right since they have limited times that they show during the day. So we're going to give you all the tips and tricks to be able to do that. And today we are using Genie Plus, which is Disney's paid skip the line service. $15 per person per day, and you get to skip the lines at over 40 attractions around Disney World, uh, most attractions in this park. It's kind of tricky where you can only book one lightning lane at a time. So we, of course, do have Slinky Dog Dash right now, and we'll be able to book our next one to use that one a little after 10 a.m. So starting on Genie Plus, you can buy it the day of at midnight, and you can start making your first Genie Plus selection starting at 7 a.m. If you're going to go for those individual attraction selections like we did with Rise, you can start that when the park opens. For us today, that was at 8.30. So this morning, the lovely Quincy, at 7, she grabbed a Slinky Dog Dash, which is amazing because that is easily the most in-demand Genie Plus for Hollywood Studios. The Genie Plus Lightning Lanes book up for it almost every day. So yeah. It's a, it was a good grab. So it is about drive and it is about power when you rope drop in the morning. We are here at Rockin' Roller Coaster, which is a roller coaster based on uh, Aerosmith. It has Aerosmith music and it is very, very popular. It tends to have a 45 minute to an hour and a half wait. It can get very long. It can get very long. Uh, right now it's posted 15 minutes. My guess is at rope drop it'll be a little bit less than that. So this is a good move, I think. Now they do go ahead and post predictive wait times in the morning, just so that you don't see that it has a five minute wait and then end up waiting 20 because a surprising number of people rushed over there. But a lot of times it'll take a minute for the wait times to ramp up to what they are on the sign. So hopefully we get a basically a walk on. And there's no better way to start your day than with rock and roll. Rock and roll. Rock and roll. Yeah. I know that it's very important that we rope drop quickly, but I really want my name to show up on the sign. Ugh. Out of the line None of these people are me. Hannah? No. Oh. And I'm not Elmer either. Oh. 
I kind of got confused about your real name. This is what I would call a walk-on, yes. Oh, wow. Yep. So this is the pre-show room, which means we can stop our timer here, which means it just took two minutes to walk in here. Which is your favorite lava lamp? Uh, definitely this green one with the lots of things. I like that one too. It's a good one. I like this one that hasn't woken up yet. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that's me too. One. Lava lamp. But yeah, this is maybe the most walk-on that this ride can get. We're strolling right on in. Um, and hopefully we'll be on and off this fast enough to also get pretty much a walk-on in Tower of Terror. It would be a pretty great start to the day. You ride in a limo with backstage passes to an Aerosmith concert too. Thank you. And uh, you kind of cruise through the wild highways of LA. It's a shortcut because you know that LA traffic. What song are you holding again? Honestly, I can't think of the names and of any of them. Which is sacrilegious because I did work here. You also so. were just singing in the lobby. I know every word. I just don't know the names of this. I hope we get... So they, they have Love in an Elevator as one of the songs on this, but they re-recorded it as Love in a Roller Coaster. And that's what I hope we get. That's the best one. You would think that you would know. Uh, oh. Oh. Oh, man. Tricky. It's my hand stuck in my water bottle. I'm not good at getting on the ride. I hope you were attached to your makeup this morning. I always am, <laughs> and that's okay. That's a roller coaster, baby. <laughs> Rock and roll! That's right, baby. Rock no and roll. Way to start your day. Yeah, we. Uh, I feel slightly more awake, yeah. but uh, I, I could still use coffee. But that's just me. I um, mean, I know where. We'll, we'll see. Uh, we'll we'll, we'll see. Gonna, yeah. yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, but we are obviously on the go because we're headed to our next rope drop ride to try to take full advantage of our rope drop strategy here today. We're headed right next door to Tower of Terror. If you can get Slinky Dog Dash, Rise of the Resistance, or Millennium Falcon Smugglers Run, you might want to head this direction for rope drop. Since all of the rides in the park do open to resort guests, a lot of resort guests head towards Galaxy's Edge and Toy Story Land for those rides. Whereas we're heading down here to Sunset and it's still super empty whereas those parts of the park are probably really busy. So it's an option. It can get busy down here. It's kind of hard to predict, but uh, it's it's my choice is usually to try to get GD pluses for that side and then head down here. So when we passed here earlier, the Tower of Terror wait was 20 minutes and it's now down at 13. Uh, 13 is a walk-on for Tower of Terror. That is the lowest that this wait can get. It's kind of a spooky number. So I'm liking that. I feel terrored. I feel terrored as well. Tower of Terror is a an elevator drop ride where that takes you into the Twilight Zone. I think this is the best themed ride in Disney uh, World. Yeah. I absolutely adore this not the ride itself because I am scared of heights even though I find it fun. But the theming to this is just so, so incredible to me. The host of the Twilight Zone had actually passed away by the time they created this ride. So I think just like the technology and the innovation of the CGI and different voice modulation, I think it's really amazing, it's really neat. And frankly, if you worked here through the night, you wouldn't have to clean. So that's kind of amazing. They also used to have this ride in Disneyland. They recently rethemed it to the Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. That was a very controversial choice. 
Personally, when I worked here, I had a lot of people who came all the way from California just to ride it as the Tower of Terror again. I think it'd be fun to get to try it, but I do love the theming of this one. Sure enough, it was a walk-on. We were up here in about two minutes, and that was just walking. This isn't even a full group going into the pre-show room. So after the pre-show, you do head into the boiler room. There can be a wait in here, usually around like... 10, 15 minutes when it's backed up. Can be a little longer if something's going on, but um, I'm a right. Um, my favorite thing about this ride is that the it is a drop zone, but there are a couple of things that make the actual ride experience unique. One, there's the dark ride segments at the beginning where you see other stuff um, and spooky parts of the hotel. And then also the drop zone, it actually pulls you down. So you drop faster than gravity, faster than a standard drop zone. Um, and the drop sequences are randomized. So every time you ride, you're going to get a different drop sequence. There is always one very big long drop at least, but it's a surprise every time, which is why I think this is one of the most re-rideable rides in Disney World, even though they're all re-rideable. shaking around and I feel crazy. That's fair. Emma, you want to see my favorite hidden detail? What? This is the sunset room and right here is the menu from the night that the Hollywood Tower Hotel got struck by lightning, October 31st, and it's what they were serving. I would have been more upset to miss out on this. Are you sure? Because they did serve Bismarck herrings. Sure. Sure. I'm hungry. <laughs> I know that it is about drive and it is about power, but I have never seen a photo pass photographer here for photos in front of this very cool door to the sunset room. And so we're hanging out. I want this spirit jersey so badly. It is so cute and it has all the villains on it, but it's $75. Hi Goofy, hi Max. <laughs> oh. Oh, I saw, oh, are you guys talking? Yeah, I'm gonna call you guys are talking on the phone? Yeah. It's a Please. silly conversation. Silly. So, <laughs> I love calling him. <laughs> bye, Max. Bye, Goofy. You definitely want to look around when you're, when you're walking around Disney World because you never know when characters might pop up. I see Goofy and Max here at Tower regularly. I do recognize that all of the rides in the park are that way. But we, we have to walk all the way across the park anyway. We I need think, energy. I think that we should also... It's right here. It's right here. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes this line can get long, so we're kind of rope dropping. We're kind of rope dropping. You could I say. mean, this is a very short line for Joffrey. Yeah. I thought that it smelled nice in all the rides we've been on, but I think you smell nice. You smell nice. I do. <laughs> We are at Joffrey's. Now Joffrey's and Starbucks are the two options you have for coffee in the parks. The two main options. There are a few different ones that you can find around, like the cold brew that you can get caught Saka's kettle. But pumpkin is back at both of those locations. I've so. actually already had two. Hi, how are you? Of course, I did get a pumpkin pie latte with almond milk, obviously, because I'm not going to suffer today. Yeah. I do not have my dairy pills. They do have a pumpkin cold brew around the fall time of year, so that's an option too. Um, it's pretty good. It's not very sweet too, so if you want that pumpkin flavor without overly being overly sweet, it's a great option at Joffrey's. Uh, now we are going to stroll towards Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Typically around this time, Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run would already be up to a very, very long wait. But I did a wait time check when we were in Tower of Terror. And the only thing with a long wait in the park was Rise of the Resistance with a 90 minute wait. Everything else was 25 minutes or lower. And since we have that Slinky Dog Dash reservation, that Rise of the Resistance reservation, 
we kind of get to chill yeah. and still ride every ride in the park. This has been great. So yeah. Far. I like was here two days ago and it was so busy. Yeah, every time I'm on reporter walks here, this is one of the more stressful parks to me because it's it does get really busy, especially yeah. right here in Star Wars, Galaxy's Edge. But like, I'm not sure I've ever once dur at this time of day, first thing in the morning, seen this few people outside Millennium Falcon. Yeah, it's only 35 minutes right now. Uh, it was 25 when we started walking. We should have put but some pep in our dead. step. I needed a coffee though. Me too. That and now we can drink it in me. line. Yeah, that coffee will get me through those extra 10. Yep. So we are going to hop in this 35 minute for Millennium Falcon Smugglers Run. Um, it likely will get a longer as the day goes on and maybe drop down later in the day, later in the evening. But it's probably going to get a little longer, so now's the time to ride. This ride does have a single rider attraction, but I want to ride with Emma. Also, single rider on this line typically means you will get the engineer seat. So Millennium Falcon Smugglers Run is a simulator attraction where you do fly the Millennium Falcon. There are, you can either be a pilot, a gunner, or an engineer. The pilot is the most popular, the most desirable, the best seat because you do get to actually fly it with the joysticks and it responds to your controls. The other two are really just button mashing. Um, and the most boring, I think, is the engineer. So fingers crossed we get pilot. Yeah, we're gonna see. We'll see. You can see that there's all this outdoor queue area. Typically, is full around this time. I've stood in this entire queue many times. Yeah. So, now my favorite thing about waiting in this queue is there is a game in the Play Disney Parks app where you can interact with Hondo Onaka. Look, there's corn from Katsaka's popcorn, popped kernels. But you can interact with Hondo Onaka and he will, like, kind of vet you to become a smuggler and leads up to you flying the Millennium Falcon. It's super cool. There's like a part where he like helps you trade on a false identity and there's a part where you like scan cargo for him to make sure that the right stuff has come in. Very, very fun game. I make people play it with me every time I'm in this line. But we are like, I'm, I'm not sure this is gonna be 35 minutes. Unless something's wonky with the lightning lanes. Now that can happen if a lot of people have Genie Plus in the park, a lot of people have lightning lanes. It can happen where even though the line doesn't physically look very long, it is. Um, just because they do have to prioritize those people who have paid to skip the line. I'm not seeing a ton of people in the lightning lane. I'm not seeing anyone in the queue. I only saw two people walk in the lightning lane when we came up. Do I need to be chugging this? I'm starting to chug mine <laughs> fully. All right, so as you can see, we walked through the entire garage room. And we finally caught up to the line here, going into my worst favorite part of the queue. This is the more like, it's a tight part of the queue. It tends to get hot. There's big windows in there. So I don't love it, but hopefully it'll move fast today. We're not too fast. But we gotta finish these. All right, we're walking to the pre-show. You finished, oh. Ah, me too. There's Hondo. One of the most advanced animatronics in Disney World. Almost every time I'm here, I have heard other guests ask if it's an actor. I think I, it's very impressive. I want that coat. Yeah. You know what else I love? This droid. Look at his little teeth. Does he have a name? I don't know. I want to hug him. He's in, I think he's in R8 unit, R5. Are you sure? He's an R2? Cool. <laughs> Oh, well. Hopefully she comes back up before. Sorry. All right, well, we did get places engineers. Emma, are you any good at engineering a spaceship? Here's the thing. I didn't know a degree was required. Yes, we were supposed to have an engineering degree. I um, I took the intro classes. Okay, like 101? Yeah. I think that'll be fine. When you're about to head on into the cockpit for the Millennium Falcon, you do head into this open space, which is once you've boarded, and you can see it's got the slopey ceiling, the iconic hollow chest board, and a bunch of other bits and baubles in here. Um, it's super cool. You can definitely pause to take a picture, but uh, we gotta go fly the Millennium Falcon, fastest hunk of junk in the galaxy. Good job, Now after my modest profit, your god 
My best what you owe me for damaging the Falcon is... Hey, not bad. We did actually, a good job, actually. Because it said there was a thing about the, the percent damage or, yeah. or percent lack of damage, I guess. 100% was I good. Have never gotten 100%. And we had 100%. And I've been an engineer before. Yeah. So. We had pretty good pilots. We were in a, a group of all adults was in our was in our cockpit with us, which is good because when a kiddo is, is piloting, a lot of times it's not as good as maybe we would hope. Yes. So which they're do, they're trying their yeah, best. They're, the doing, they're having fun, and kids, that's what we're kids here Kids don't fly spaceships for a reason. Yeah, but, I don't fly spaceships for a reason. So. But we had a hundred percent. We so I got the highest score I've ever gotten on the ride. Yep. So we had a very great time. I love that ride. I think that it's super fun. It's one of those rides that you can really get into even with like strangers. You're yeah. like shouting at the pilots. Like we had a so great time with our family. Fam like our family. Our family. They're the our family, family now. Yeah. The well, family we, that was with us. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. A, sm a space smuggler family is a real family. That's what they say. Exactly right. We're yeah. closer than ever. Yeah. Sorry to my real mom and dad. Yeah. We have new ones now. Yep. We did just hop off of Smuggler's Run. It is up to 40 minutes. It actually only took us 14 to get to the pre-show, so a lot less than that 35. The queue is not outside yet. You can't fully see where it is at, but I don't know that it's probably 40 minutes, to be fully honest with you. It might be longer than what we waited, but I don't know if it's all the way up to 40 yet. I checked in on the wait times. Now they're starting to look a lot more typical for Hollywood Studios. Things are up in the 40, 50, 60 minute range. Um, Rise of Resistance right now is only an hour wait. That's Toy Story bad. Mania is 80 minutes. Now listen, I adore Toy Story, Toy Story Mania, but 80? 80? I don't know about that. Wowza. <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, but we actually are headed to cash in on that 7 a.m. lightning lane I booked for Slinky Dog Dash um, because it's about that time. So we'll get to skip our first line of the day. Pretty excited. Even though the lines are starting to get a little more typical, it's still slow. This is Look at Toy Story Land. Compared to what I have been saying the last few weeks for reporter things, this is empty. It's nothing. This is, I mean, if you watch our other videos that we filmed recently, yeah. it's way, way wilder than this. I, like, this is making us look bad. Yeah. Like, I what mean, kind of challenge is this? This is research. It is research. So, That's what it is. That's exactly Science. Right. Slinky Dog Dash. This is Slinky Dog Dash. Nine slinky, slinky Dog. A slinky Dog. I love him. One singular Slinky Dog. I'm excited. I do love this ride. I just don't love waiting a long time for it. Now, interestingly enough, along with the lower crowds today, it's only a... I can't read that. Can you read that? 45 minute wait? Yeah, 45. Which that's is, actually really good for Slinky. That's really good for Slinky. Slinky can be much, much higher. I also think that Slinky has one of the most brutal lines in Disney. You are in the sun for a huge majority of it. It is so close quarters. It's close quarters too. So even when you get to the shade, you're around a ton of people just so all winding yeah. back and forth. Like, There's really very cool, cool details in the queue because it is made from like toy boxes and things like that. But I hate waiting for this ride. Yeah. One of the few things in Disney World I outright hate. It is not my jam. Yep. So Slinky Dog Dash is a roller coaster here in Toy Story Land where you get to ride with Slinky Dog through a course that Andy himself has built. It is a really popular ride, especially because the height requirement is not as high as things like Rock and Roller Coaster. So younger kiddos can ride it, of course, depending on height, but it does make it more popular, especially for families. And it's a great first roller coaster, in my opinion. It's very smooth. There's no sudden drops, nothing crazy. I do recommend booking Slinky Dog Dash at 7 a.m. if it's on your list of things to get with Genie Plus. Of course, after you book that one at 7 a.m., you can book a new one either when you use it or after a two-hour cooldown. Luckily, ours is before a two-hour cooldown from park open, so we would be able to book a new one at 10.30, but our lightning lane's at 10.10 or 10.15, which means we can go right in now, and then we get to book a new lightning lane. But we've actually already breezed through a bunch of the most popular rides in the park, so I would love to take credit, but I think that we've just gotten very lucky with our crowd levels today. What's your favorite Mr. Pricklepants song? Um, probably Yolda A. He Who. Okay, yeah. That's a good one, that's a good one. Uh, my favorite is I've Chosen Later Hosen. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, too. yeah, what a, what a good one. Oh. <laughs>
another lightning lane in GD Plus. If you want to learn more about GD Plus, you can learn all about it. We have full guides to GD Plus on the channel. We have experiments where we've gone up against one another, some people with GD Plus, some with not, in all four parks. So go check us out to learn like in detail the ins and outs. Uh, tonight, not tonight, this is the daytime. It's the morning. It's really the morning. We've only been here for two hours. Yeah. And we've already ridden four rides. Yeah. And four of the biggest yeah, rides in the park. Say, they're huge. Huh? Yeah. So if, uh, if you want to learn more about Genie Plus, check those out. But we definitely are just doing kind of an overview and using it to supplement our challenge today. Yep. Our very easy. Nobody's yeah. in the park challenge. I was going to say, a, a challenge that I'm, I think we're winning. I think we are winning. So, so we must have good karma. I know. I feel like I've been saving up. Yeah. I, I, I did my we're time in the We're lines. cashing in today. Yeah. If you want to see Emma wait in really long lines, you should check out her crowd series where she does overviews of what crowds are like in Disney World right now. Exactly. And also the crowds in Emma's videos, which are from literally, she's filmed them like a few weeks in, ago. Very recently. Yeah, very recently. Like last week uh, are much wilder much than this. So again, yeah. uh, crowds can fluctuate pretty, pretty quickly. All right, we were just booking our next lightning lane. We were able to get a Toy Story Mania, which again has that 80 minute queue right now for about 25 minutes from now, which is not too bad at all. And we can probably knock something else out in that time. I wa I did notice, however, when I was looking at our plans that uh, the our individual lightning lane for Rise wasn't there. Yep. So looks like our my purchase did glitch this morning and it never went through. Now the good news is, is that today Rise of Resistance still had lightning lanes available at one at 3.55 I was able to book. Um, and we we're definitely gonna still be here then. So it was no big deal. A little bit of change to our day plans. If they are sold out, which certainly can happen, go to guest services, explain what happened, or a guest experience tent. And it really helps if you take screenshots when you buy something to make sure that you have that um, that recorded. I did, so if we needed to, I could have gone and talked to them today. But since the purchase didn't go through at all, I just booked another one. But that can happen, the app can glitch. Take lots of screenshots, go talk to cast members, and be polite. Um, it, they understand glitches and they want to help you. Um, and they will be happy to as long as you're nice to them. So and double, triple, make sure that you hit the confirmation screen. Yes. Because I have made com made like reservations and lightning lanes and I haven't hit confirm. You'd be surprised how many buttons you have to press. Yeah, yeah. so just just double check everything, double check a couple of times, and if ever in doubt, go talk to your cast member guest experience. Yep. So we are actually walking under these umbrellas, which are typically the Slinky Dog Dash queue <laughs> when it gets really long. This is when it's out at like two, two plus hours. During the um, COVID era of Disney World, I did wait next to Walt Disney Presents to get in the Oh, Dog. wow. Yeah. That's a long Walked one. I waited, I waited in uh, Incredibles Courtyard for Toy Story Mania on several occasions. Yep. Yeah, so those lines can get really, really long. Um, we've got a minute here, so we're going to head uh, right out of Toy Story Land to Walt Disney Presents, which is the exhibit. Uh, there is a film in there called One Man's Dream, which is on our list of things to catch today. So we're going to go catch it. Thank goodness. It's technically an attraction. And it's in the air conditioning. I love Walt Disney Presents, but I'm somebody who enjoys the history of everything, too. So yeah. I think it's fun. And this one is certainly not a must-do. Yeah. But it is when you're doing a challenge to ride every ride and see every show in, in Hollywood Studios. So we're doing it. Our next stop is going to be Walt Disney Presents. This is actually kind of two attractions, if you want to call it a that. Twofer. One, a two for one, you know. First, you can meet Sully in here, which actually can get a little bit busy. We are not going to be meeting Sully today because that is not on our list. But if you are meeting Sully, this is where you're going to do it. And the line can get a little bit long. So watch those wait times on my Disney experience. But what we are doing is Walt Disney one man's dream. If you're interested in Disney history or you're really interested in air conditioning, this could be a really fun option. I'm really interested in air conditioning. And I'm interested in Walt Disney, so, so perfect. it's perfect. Um, I will say if you do want to learn more about meeting Sully or any other character in Disney World, we did meet every single, we did every single character meet and greet in all of Disney World for a video. So you can go check that out. It's up on the channel. There you go. So one thing that I am personally interested about uh, Walt Disney Presents is, is this fun little attraction. Look at her. There she is. Welcome. Could you feel the AC immediately? Oh my gosh. It's I, a game changer. Fun I, fact. It's drawing a lot of attention to how Do much you know why the AC is, is so good in here? Why? Because there's a lot, actually, historical artifacts, and they have to keep it at a certain temperature. Oh, I so, didn't know there was a reason. I just yeah. thought it was a mystical place. No, they have to keep everything preserved. I like So that. there you go. Me too. But to be you have to preserve Quincy's. But what's so neat to me is it does take you through 
basically the startup of their animation, how they did what they did, why it was so groundbreaking. And again, this is not going to be everybody's cup of tea, but I genuinely really think it's neat. And it's one of those little Disney places that has a ton of history that a lot of people skip over. I want to be a Mouseketeer. Anybody else? So when you get to the very back of the Walt Disney Presents exhibit, you'll see that there's a pretty long line here. This is the line to meet Sully, and uh, it does get pretty long. Sully is a very popular character. It surprises me. I love Sully, but it is a very popular character. Now our show is going to be back here at the Walt Disney Theater. We've timed this poorly, because there are 14 full minutes until yes. the next show. However, there's a bench in the AC, so... Hello, bench. All right, we have finished One Man's Dream, um, which I think should put us at time for our lightning lane for Toy Story Mania. Mania. Yep. I need to start stretching. Sure is. Yeah, you're gonna. I'm very bad at Toy Story Mania. I love Toy Story Mania. Doesn't mean I'm good at it, but I love it. Emma destroyed me at Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger spin the other day. That's true. So we'll that's kind of a specialty of mine, though. So we'll <laughs> see how Mania. We'll goes. We'll see how Mania goes. I'm really not good. I need. To, I am serious about stretching. Yeah. So okay. You just go ahead. I'm gonna <laughs> keep. Alright, we are headed in the lightning lane for Toy Story Mania. It's a bit packed up right now, um, which might be why the wait time is posted is so long. It has gone down, it's still up around an hour. Um, but we'll see, this is really backed up for the lightning lane. This is really backed up for lightning lane, and I will also say it doesn't look backed up for the regular. Yeah, so I think that what's happening is that there aren't that many people in the regular queue, but lightning lane got backed up at some point, and they're trying to keep up with it, which does lengthen the regular queue's yeah. wait as well. So we'll see how long we wait. I'm this is my favorite thing in the queue. All of the, the little viewfinder, and you can actually see the scenes from Peter Pan in the little <laughs> windows. <laughs> this is moving very quickly, I will say. The queue in here is super cool. It does look like it's made from like board games like the rest of Toy Story Land. You do get a glimpse in the lightning lane of the very good Mr. Potato Head animatronic, but not very much of one. It's kind of through these Uno cards. Yeah, it's a glimpse, not an experience. Yeah, so you do kind of miss Mr. Potato Head, which is a bit of a bummer. Um, not so much of a bummer that I would say don't get a lightning lane for this ride to see him, but definitely make sure you glance through those cards and at least catch a glimpse. All right, Emma. Game on. Do you know red's a lucky color? I don't know how true that is. It's the truth. <laughs> Toy Story Mania is an interactive shooter attraction where, of course, you are toy sized, you're in Toy Story Land, and you ride through Andy's bedroom playing Midway games hosted by the Toy Story cast. I am not very good at it, and I think Emma is probably going to be me. Emma, I would like to point out that I did get 1% higher accuracy than you, so. And I got 20,000 points oh. higher than you? Oh, that is true. I didn't want to bring it up, but since you started the combo. Very exciting occurrence is that we do get to head into uh, Jesse's Trading Post, which is the new store at the exit of Toy Story Mania. Um, this is amazing. I have actually haven't been in here yet. I was here the day it opened. Yes. It was insane. And I, the details are so special. Like, you could tell they really put a lot of thought into this, not just, like, opening a new store. Well, it's I, very neat. I really love it because the old store felt like it was, like, tacked into a like an employee backstage room. Like, yeah. there was no theming to it when this they whole ride is so immaculately open. themed. Yeah. And now, like, having this space, which isn't that big, but there's so much more happening in here. I love this. Also, don't you love it? Are there's, you serious? a snake in my boot? I, a snake plant in my boot. Yeah. Aww. I love them. There's a snake in my boot. I asked him if I could look around to see some of the stuff in the store. And then we came over here and she was like, I have to put my hand in this. This is for <laughs> I want it so much. Do you want the whole suit or just the gloves? Yeah, Are your hands that small? Yeah. <laughs> look how tiny they look. So sixty dollar costumes you can get the children's gloves. This is size thirteen. You give, there. you give, you know, you get. Fourteen. You like gift your nephew like the rest of the costume. Just keep the gloves. All right. For reference, it's about eleven forty-five. Park open this morning at 8.30, and we've already ridden every ride that I had on our list of genie priorities, most of them without genie. Yeah. Um, except for Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, mm -hmm. which we have lightning lane for. So, 
I'm feeling really good. Now, things could still get tricky because we still have to catch all the shows and that can get hard because some of the shows only show four times a day. They can get rained out. Uh, through blue skies right now, but this is Florida, hey, baby. Hey, don't. I was going to say. You're oh, yeah. I'm pulling an Emma and jinxing the weather. So uh, we'll, we'll see if we can make it through all the shows and all the filler rides that we still have to do. Yep. We're headed into the hottest part of the day, so this is where things will start to get dicey. It's going to be great. We're now headed to hit our first show of the day. Um, I definitely recommend hitting some of the shows, most specifically Beauty and the Beast and Indiana Jones a little earlier in the day. They do uh, tend to have busier shows in the afternoon. Also, it's hotter in the afternoon and they can get stormed out if the weather is severe enough. They also have earlier cutoff times than shows like Frozen. Yes, so it's important to like go go, go grab them. Um, I think Indiana Jones only has four shows today. Frozen has four or five. So there's something that you really want to keep an eye on the time to try to make it to them. The 12 o'clock show is starting. I see that they have standing room it looks like still. So hopefully we can get in and catch, catch it in time. If not, we'll pop back later. We've made it to Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular, and just like in the name, it is a stunt show. It is 20 to 25 minutes. It's actually a very exciting show. It's my favorite show, maybe in all of Disney World, definitely in Hollywood. Quincy's favorite show, and it's an original opening day Hollywood Studios attraction. We've got a lightning lane that we're headed to, but Sorry. Emma's distracted. You know. You basically have Kermit sized hands. It's the same. It's the same. It's actually embarrassingly not that different. It's and not easy like... being green. Hi ho, can you do a Kermit? I can't do a Kermit. Um, no. Can anyone besides Jim Henson and the Kermit, current Kermit do one? I don't Probably think so. Not. Next stop is Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. This is one of the relatively new rides here at Hollywood Studios. It did just open in March 2020, and so, you know, it didn't get used that much for a few months there. But you and your all of your friends in your car go on a runaway railway adventure where Mickey and Minnie are trying to save you. It's got highs. It's got lows. It's a lot of action. Are you ready? There's a dance class. There's a dance class with Daisy. And one, two, three, one, two, three. Are you ready? Yes. Let's get that lightning lane. We already have it. Yeah, get in yeah. the lightning lane. Let's get in the lightning lane. In that lightning lane. It's one of my favorite rides here. I, I thought I would hate it and I still love it every time. We're both great movie ride stands, yep. um, but I also really love this ride. It's really cool that Mickey finally got his own attraction. Yep. It's his first ever, which is, I mean, he's more he's deserving. Yeah, he needs an attraction. Yeah. And it's so cute, and the projections are so cool in there. Um, my favorite scene is Dancing with Daisy Duck. Of so fun. Um, so that was a delight. And also, it only took us like, it probably took us like eight minutes on the ride with Lightning yeah. Lane, which is because the Lightning Lane routes into the regular queue still a little bit before the pre-show, so we were in with the regular queue. But eight minutes all in is not bad. Um, and that was our last hard to get attraction of the day. We have Rise booked, of course, so we'll be getting on Rise later, but we're covered on all the hard ones, which means we've yeah. just got filler attractions, which are more the rides that are like, you just don't need to worry as much about like getting a lightning lane or getting in line at a strategic time. They tend to have shorter rides and shows. Yeah. So I think we go catch a couple shows, maybe some AC. I'm feeling AC. I'm feeling maybe a lunch at some point. How do you feel about lightning lane? I love Lightning McQueen. How do you feel about it? I also love Lightning McQueen. Oh, good job. Good job. All right, we are here at Lightning McQueen's Racing Academy. Now, this is a show that's kind of tucked back and hidden in the back of Hollywood Studios. There are very good bathrooms over here if you're interested. They're Breed Love's favorite. Um, there's these cool, like, car photo ops that you can do. It's a, it's a really cool show. It is not exactly something that you need to do unless you've got a little kiddo who loves cars or loves Lightning McQueen or any of the characters. Um, I actually do really enjoy this show though and it has some of the best air conditioning in Hollywood Studios. It's only about 10 minutes long so it's great for a break and it has a very cool animatronic of Lightning McQueen. It literally looks like the real Lightning McQueen's on stage talking to you. It's are you a sports car or a sedan? Or a truck or a van? Yeah, you're a sedan. I think I might be like a hatchback. Yeah. 
We found someone before the show starts. Yes, Miranda's here reporting. Hello. A little cameo, if you will. We love a good reporting day. Has yeah. it been good? These look, look how cute. And They're new. The she got the scoop. Oh my god, lightning's for. coming out. <laughs> oh. Oh. Well, what do you mean, oh? I mean, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Well, hey there, rookie racers. <laughs> Thanks for coming out today. That show is so good. It is so good. It's I, emotional. I, listen, the weirdest things they'd be crying in the theme parks. Like in, in Disney World, it's the Lightning McQueen Racing Academy, and in Universal, it's the oh, Minions yeah, ride. Well, I'm like a waterworks. And you know what? I love a good cry in a theme park, so no judgment from me. You guys probably won't cry in that. But probably not. It's a skip if you don't love cars. If you need some AC, you're over here, or you got a kid that loves cars, I recommend it. I do really enjoy it. It's a great break. I actually, I mean, even though I don't cry, I really enjoy it. It's a cute show. Yeah. Give it a check out. On to the next, I think. On to the next. All right, so we're going to do another show, an outdoor show, which means we can bring in food and or beverages. Um, we haven't had lunch yet, and since we're trying to ride all the rides in one day, we're gonna do a little multitask here with lunch and a show. Um, so we're at Fairfax Fair, which is my favorite place to grab lunch in Hollywood Studios. They have gourmet hot dogs, Em and I are both hot dog fans, and I really love the hot dogs here. Emma has not had them. Have not. So we'll I see. Yeah, I think you're gonna be pleased. All right, we are hot, it is almost two o'clock. And that means it's almost time for Beauty and the Beast live on stage. This is a Broadway style production and it actually did just get updated to have the return of more of the performers. It was a, an altered show due to the pandemic. So that is back. You can learn a lot more about those changes in Sage's latest huge updates in Hollywood Studios video. Um, but because it is an outdoor theater like Indiana Jones, that means you can bring food and drink in. So here's Emma holding two hot dogs for us to eat while we watch Beauty and the Beast. I got the bacon truffle mac and cheese hot dog. That's like the way to my heart. It's incredibly warm. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. What is the best way to do this? No, there's no good way. I'm so sorry. That's a good hot dog. I have the BLTA, which is, it's bacon, lettuce, tomato, um, avocado, and it also has a black pepper aioli and ranch chips on it. Ooh, it is so good. This is the way to go. And getting it and sitting in this theater with these huge fans blowing air on us, watching an amazing show. There's nothing better than this. No, I'm so we glad peaked. we did this. Good? Yeah. What more can you ask for? So as we work our way through the afternoon, we are in one of the hottest parts of the day. Lines are the longest at this time, just because most people tend to be in the park in the smack middle of the day. Um, which means it is a great time to watch shows because you are sitting either in theaters with huge fans or in air conditioned theaters, um, which is where we're headed right now. Our next stop is Disney Junior Dance Party, which is a more kid geared show, but you do see a number of characters, including Vampirina, you see Roadster uh, Mickey a lot of times. It's a very, very fun show for kids. Um, obviously, as an adult, it's a skip for me, but if you've got kiddos, uh, or if you just really need some AC, I suppose you can hop in here. Yeah. And it's one of the attractions on our list, so we're headed in. Well, Done. show's over. Uh, and it's a harsh, cruel world outside of the Disney Junior Dance Party. It's true. In there, everything was joyful. Bubbles. There was club music for children. Singing, dancing. Air conditioning. And now we're just in the sun. No bubbles. No dancing. We can do dancing. That's true. We could dance. That's a choice. All right. So we've got a, a chunk of time here before our uh, Rise of Resistance individual lightning lane. So... We're gonna hit some of the like smaller rides that we haven't hit yet. That's really just Star Tours and Alien Swirling Saucers. Um, 
You're leaving out Muppets Vision 3D? Correct. We also have to go to Muppet Vision 3D. I, and I, I'm sorry. I don't want to interrupt you. I think you said have to. I, I did. We do have we to. We get to. It's a privilege. And we get to go honor. to Muppet Vision 3D. Thank you. Well, Emma is obsessed with the Muppets. So she sent me... Like a, she's exposing like me. a three minute video of her singing in her car, dramatic. She was soaking wet. We had been caught in the rain. Yeah, and it was just her dramatically lip syncing to "Am I a Man or Am I a Muppet?" I wish that was a joke. Crowds have certainly picked up a bit. I can see a big old crowd up ahead of us, um, but it's still a relatively slow day for Hollywood Studios, um, which I think means we might be able to hop on Star Tours with no wait. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. We both love Star Tours. I actually do love Star Tours. I know people don't always love it. It's a fan favorite for me. I've always liked it. When they redid the music in 2012, my uncle was on there. Ah. For it. For so, listen to the French horn. There you go. It's Emma's uncle. Star Tours is a motion ride that it is actually a lot of fun to me because you can get different scenarios and scenes and adventures. There she goes. Star Touring. Amazing. But you can get different adventures every time. You get three scenes and they can mix and match. I have gotten countless different rides on this. I really like this simulator. Be aware though, motion sickness is absolutely present on this ride. It is not necessarily for anyone who thinks they might potentially get motion sick. But remember kids, motion sickness is worth it when you get to look at Oscar Isaac. Um, while I agree with that statement, don't take that to heart. It was a total walk on. Thousand percent it was. Like took a minute and a half to walk up here and now we're at the door. Arto Dito, I am not programmed to fly these things. Now just turn us around this instant. Arto, hit the brakes! Alrighty, how do you feel about Star Tours? Sleazy? Fair. I had a good time. I actually haven't had one of the original trilogy. Mm -hmm. So basically they redid it to add scenes from the new trilogy. And I haven't had one focused on the original trilogy since they did that, which was years ago now. And so it was really cool to have like Vader and the Wookiee planet and Yoda and yeah. stuff instead of having like Kylo Ren and Rey, who I love, and Poe Dameron, who I also love. I almost always get the original trilogy, so it must just be me. It must be you. Yeah. But it uh, was I good. usually I used to always get Jar Jar Binks, the Gungan planet. Me said Jar Jar Binks. Yep. And then I started getting just repeats of Poe Dameron, which I'll accept that. I was gonna say I'd be pretty I'll happy with that. that one. Now we're headed to my personal favorite, Muppet Vision 3D. Oh, look, how fun! Oh, she's getting an award. Cast members. That's so fun. And we're going to Muppet Vision 3D. I, there's a lot happening. This is the best day. I'm overwhelmed. Muppet Vision 3D. The Muppets have invented their own version of 3D that they are calling Muppet Vision 3D. Dr. Bunsen and Beaker have invented it, but because they're the Muppets, trouble ensues. What? Yes, I'm not spoiling. Spoilers, I'm not spoiling, I'm not. And then there's a Kermit cast member. Oh my god, he has a name tag? Hello. Oh, oh, I love it. Here. Of, of course, course he has he a does. name tag. That's true. Amazing. Oh, the babies. <gasps> the babies. There they are. There we are. Look Just at like them. Us. That's uncanny. Did you know there is a Jim, Jim Hansen Muppet in here? It's the only one ever made. Jim Hansen was never depicted as a Muppet outside of this attraction. And there he is. Oh, he's a little bit hard to see, but that's the only place you'll ever find Jim Hansen as a Muppet because this is the last Muppet thing he ever worked on before he passed away. Hey, 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 look! Look at the guy in the goofy mask! That's not a mask. Uh -huh. Sorry, lady! <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy. I got to sing with Miss Piggy. I got to see Kermit. Yeah, the show is a little bit out of date. It's got a bit. it's got the 3D's a little out of date. There's some out of date like references and things. Yeah. But it's still a very fun show. It's very funny. There are some surprising effects that still hold up to this day. I think it's worth doing, especially if you love the Muppets. Absolutely. And even if you don't, it's a great AC break and a, no, I think comfortable chairs. I agree. So and you know what? It's a, a great shot. precursor to Rise of Resistance. And our lightning lane opens in one minute. Here we go. All right, so we popped back into Batuu where we are at Star Wars Rise of the Resistance. This is one of the most popular rides in all of Disney World. 
It's posted wait right now is low at just 40 minutes, which is definitely worth waiting for this ride in my opinion. Absolutely that's worth waiting. Yeah, for it this can ride. it can be up to two hours. It gets very, very long and it typically stays long all day. 40 minutes is one of the lowest times I've ever seen. For I have it. personally never witnessed this again in person. I waited 95 minutes for this last week. More popular rides are available as individual lightning lanes. They are not included with Genie Plus. So you can get them whether you get Genie Plus or not. Uh, they're just a separate fee that is date based. So on busier days, it can be more expensive. Today, Rise of Resistance was $15 per person. So the same price as skipping the line with Genie Plus for everything else just to skip the line at Rise of Resistance. That's how popular it is. The most immersive attraction in the world, most likely. Unbelievable every time I ride it, my breath is taken away. So I'm very excited that we get to skip the line and head on it right now. We waited about two minutes and now we are at the doors for the pre-show. Emma's never done the lightning lane. She, she waited like an hour long and now we're here. Is everyone assembled? Good. This is Black Leader. I hear you're a fine looking group of recruits. Enemies of the first order. We will soon set down your leader resistance. It's I like it's definitely it's not my favorite, but it's the best. Yes, yes. like it, it just is. Yep, yeah. it's it is so advanced. It's so immersive. I always tell people that now, when I remember being on Rise of the Resistance, it feels like I remember the time I was in a legitimate real Star Wars. Yeah, in space. It's amazing. like when I remember it, it doesn't feel like being on a ride. It feels like being in a world that I love, yeah. the Star Wars world. It's amazing. Um, it's definitely intense. It's worth a longer wait. I have waited much longer than it's 60 minutes now. I would wait 60 minutes for that in a heartbeat. Agreed. If we didn't have more rides to get through, I'd hop right back in line. Me too. What are it you is, doing after? We're done here. I guess we're riding rides over and over and over and over and over again. Nice. It is, it is so, so, so fun. Definitely worth doing. Um, and if it is going to be a busier day, I do recommend trying to snag that light individual lightning lane just to guarantee that you can get on it. If you can't snag a lightning lane, I do recommend rope dropping, whether you're a resort guest or not. Uh, if you're curious about what that looks like, we did test out all the different ways you can get on Rise of the Resistance when our Conquering the Most Stressful Ride in Hollywood Studios video, so go check that out. attraction. It's so early. It's so early. What's our last big one? Alien Swirling Saucers. We saved that till the end. Yeah, big finale. Alright, here we go. Uh, for the first time in forever, Frozen Sing Along is honestly a delight. I never watched it because even though I love Frozen, um, as an adult, I was just like, that's for kids, obviously. It's so good. And one day, I was here with my brother, and we had a lot of extra time in Hollywood Studios. So we were like, I don't know. I guess we'll go catch some AC. And it, we loved it. So it's so funny. It is so funny. The Arendelle historians are, like, full-on comedian level. And the jokes are not just for kids. They're yep. for mom and dad, too. Yep. There's an Arendelle after dark joke that I enjoy every was, time. I was going to say, she makes me laugh every time She's I watch so the funny. show. She's so funny. Delivers it beautifully. Yes. It's a little on the long side, I will say. But if you got, if you love Frozen or if you've got kids who love Frozen, I think it's a must do. I also think the seats are incredibly comfortable and I have watched longer shows in Oh my seats. gosh, yeah, I'd take a nap in those seats. Absolutely. Tonight. We 
to round off our evening, we are going to Alien Swirling Saucers. Alien Swirling Saucers, you get to board a toy rocket and hang on tight because the aliens are driving and they are flinging you side to side in their cars. It's a little bit more than teacups. You don't control it. You're not necessarily spinning in that way, but you are going round and round. Traditionally, because this is one with a lower height requirement, the times can get up in the higher side because again, families can ride this, but unless you're with those kiddos, not one we would traditionally recommend. The claw. I love this ride. That was really good. There is another version of this ride at one of the overseas Disney's, but it's Baymax. And I want to really? ride it so bad. That's so cool. Whee! The talking mad smack about aliens throwing saucers. I don't know if she did that on camera, but Emma off camera was like, I don't know, it's fine. But you seemed like you're having a good time. I actually did have a really good time. I feel like this is one of those that like, if you let yourself get into it, yeah. you can have a good time. It's, I, I really enjoy this ride. It makes me laugh. It's so fun. I love riding it with friends. I even like riding it alone. The music is so fun. The theming is so fun. And like the feeling of getting flung around by the little alien. It was, a, I, okay, I've not been on this in a hot minute. Mm -hmm. And it was a little bit more intense than I remember. You think, I you're say. like, oh, well also when you're riding with somebody, there's like definitely opportunity to crush each other. Yeah. Absolutely. Which is fun. Um, so, just a great ride. And also, our last ride. A pretty a nice, good ride. Easy though. way to finish. Yeah. It wasn't our last ride. I checked our list. We still have to ride Vacation Fun, which isn't a ride. I was going to say. But it is an attraction. Ride. We saw Walt Disney Presents, so it definitely counts. One man's that dream. So, I love Vacation Fun. Me too. It's a Mickey short. And it, I think that's a very chill way to end the day. Especially if this rain cloud wants to drop a little shower, we'll potato be indoors. Potato land! I love potato land. I do too. We recognize this challenge went very smoothly because it was such a slow day today. If you want to see us redo this challenge as we head into the holidays and to some of the busiest crowds of the whole year, let us know in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> Extra surprise final attraction that we just forgot about. Um, is vacation fun? Now, as you can probably tell, this is certainly a skip. It is an original animated short with Mickey and Minnie that you can only see here in Hollywood Studios. It was made originally to go with the opening of Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. It's super cute. It's in the new short style. I enjoy it greatly. And the theater is Mickey themed. So uh, not quite as good a way to end the day as Aliens Rolling Saucers, but still a good way to I'm end the day. I'm still pleased. There are worse ways to end your day. Agreed. Ours might be with rain. It might be with rain. But that's why you get your mini um umbrella <laughs> from Amazon, kids. <laughs> my favorite part of um, seeing Vacation Fun is these photo ops at the end where you can stand in the Mickey shorts and take pictures. Um, you actually don't have to see the show to come in here though. I'm just walk right in these doors and take pictures from them. I do it regularly <laughs> just to update my potato lamb pics. Um, All right, from 8.30 a.m. to 6.07 p.m. Yep. We were able to ride or see every attraction in Hollywood Studios. Yes, we were. And with time to spare. I feel amazing. Me too. I mean, we could get a dinner. We could ride rides again. We could meet characters we could meet still. Characters. There's Smashed a lot of it. stuff we could do. It was super easy for us to get everything done. And get good lightning lanes. Lines barely popped up today. Yeah. I mean, we're in Hollywood Studios, which is the busiest part. We saw some long lines of like 80 minutes, but most of the day, most stuff was 25 minutes or less. Me? personally saw Rise of the Resistance at 40 minutes At today. 40 minutes. And I bet you it was less if we actually would have waited. In. Absolutely. So just a wild day. I mean, it's super interesting. Like, Disney has been so busy lately to see a slow day like this. Like, fast, too. Yeah. Look at that. That's a quick drop. Yeah. I'll take it, though. It was I'm wild. Pleased. We were able to ride every single attraction in the park by 6 p.m. Yeah. So not much of a challenge, but no. definitely very interesting to see what it's like when Disney World is actually slow. Yeah. Which, there you go. Late summer, apparently. Perfect time to come, maybe. Yeah. We'll find out. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. Now go check out our best day ever in Magic Kingdom. See you there. Bye. Yeah.